Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Mike sent me a note about a story out of California. Class action lawsuit wants a company scanning and selling Californians' license plate data to pay up. Stories from SF Gate and Stephen Council wrote it. There is a trial set for May, and this case affects millions of California drivers. But of course, the company says they did nothing wrong. But this one's going to go to trial, and a jury might decide this. So if you drive a car in California, you could be in for a payday thanks to a lawsuit alleging privacy violations by a Texas company. The lawsuit was filed three years ago. It was given class action status just this past September. And it alleges that a company is breaking a California law meant to regulate the use of automatic license plate readers. The company is out of Fort Worth. They use plate scanning cameras to create location data for people's vehicles, then sell that data to marketers, car repossessors, and insurers. And so what's notable about this case is how big the class would be if, in fact, it proceeds. The court has established that if you're a California resident whose license plate data was collected by this company at least 15 times since 2017, you're a class member. The plaintiff's legal team estimates that the tally includes about 23 million people. They allege that the cameras were mounted to cars on public roads, and the case website lets you check whether your plate was ever scanned. Barring a settlement or delay, the trial will decide whether they must pay a penalty to those class members will begin on May 17th in San Diego. Case hinges on a law that went into effect in California in 2016, setting up a $2,500 minimum payment for those who successfully sue violators of the law. It mandates that the collection and dissemination of automated license plate data be consistent with respect for individuals' privacy and civil liberties. A lawyer for a law firm representing the class members told SF Gate that his team will try to show the jury that the business is a mass surveillance program. He frequently takes on technology companies over privacy issues in his practice. The company is capturing a pretty detailed picture of people's lives, he said, that could be capturing you at home, at work, at your school, your house of worship, at your doctor, and we'll be able to argue to the jury that that does not respect Californians' civil liberties or their privacy, and that they're harmed by the violations of the statute. Uh, the company denies the allegation that it broke California law. The case's website, um, which is a court-ordered neutral ground for potential class members, says the company maintains that neither plaintiff nor any similarly situated person has suffered any harm. They also maintain that the uh, statute, referring to the relevant California law, does not prohibit the collection or storage of information and that its system is secure and has never been breached. The company readily advertises the fact that it scans license plates on its website, they even call itself the leading expert in license plate recognition technology and analytics. The company's camera scan 220 million plates a month, according to their website, and customers can use plate data to create comprehensive vehicle stories. I know that a lot of people are going to be inclined to say, but Steve, you're driving down the road and your license plate is visible to somebody who sees it. That's true. My license plates are also visible to anybody who watches my videos. However, there is something intrusive about things out there just sweeping up this data because they're not just recording your license plate number. They're recording where it is and when it was there. And now, again, if someone's driving behind me in traffic, they can say, oh, there's a car, there's the license plate, they're obviously in front of me in traffic, I know where I am, therefore I know where they are. What's the, what's the big deal? Again, one person looking at my license plate or a couple people looking at my license plate as I drive down the road ain't no big deal. But when there are these readers out there just sweeping up vast amounts of information and tying it together with when it was recorded, where it was recorded, then suddenly you start getting into some privacy issues. Uh, are, they, are they going, you know, are, are, they, are they getting this information? Uh, could they indicate perhaps that you went to the doctor? Did they, did they gather the information near a hospital? Okay. Where were you going at, at 3 o'clock in the morning that one time? You know? <laughs> and so there's, there's unfortunately a lot of technology out there that can do all kinds of things we never would have thought possible 20, 30 years ago. Or we would have thought, well, it's possible, but who would want it? And now, of course, you discover that everything you own is tracking you. My, my, my toaster right now is probably thinking about me. But, you know, your phone, for instance, we've talked about that before. And also your, your surfing habits on your desktop, right? You're being tracked by all kinds of stuff. But I think that the idea that 
there are these devices out there just photographing the plates and then also noting where it was photographed and when and just doing that over and over and over again uh, is, is a little bit much. It is a little bit much. Now, I'm not as familiar with the California privacy rules. Um, so this is a state thing right now. It's in California. Uh, if other states have got similar laws, similar class actions might result. But what would be a really scary prospect is that they say that there could be 23 million people in the class, and you are entitled to $2,500 minimum payment if you are a victim of that law. Now, of that law being broken. And if you do the math, and again, this is one where it doesn't matter how busy I am, I can't do this in my head, 23 million times 2,500, and that's for a single violation. So if somebody's in the class and they got violated twice, <laughs> does that mean they get five grand? <laughs> so that kind of math is going to create some extremely large numbers. And so it could be, that the company goes, hey, we got an ironclad defense. We're not scared of anything. We'll see you in court. But it could also be that somebody's sitting in a room right now doing the math and going, can we risk this exposure? What if? What if we get hit for this? And as you and I both know, if you've got a class with 23 million people in it, we can settle that case for $46 million plus attorney fees. Everybody in the class gets two bucks and the attorneys get, I don't know, <laughs> attorney fees, whatever those might be. And that often is what happens in cases like this. The real problem I suspect that would keep this case from being settled too easily like that is, number one, the attorney who says, look, this is what I do. I specialize in this kind of stuff. And so it wouldn't look very good if he settled the case and didn't get some kind of substantive result for the class members. But also, I suspect, there's no mention in the story here, I suspect they're looking for equitable relief, meaning that they're probably going to say, not only do we want damages for the members of the class who've been harmed because this information was gathered about them, but we want a court order to make them stop. And suddenly, if you make them stop doing business in California, which may be one of their biggest markets, uh, it might put a gigantic dent in their ability to make a profit. So that, I suspect, is actually the real sticking point. So I'll be very curious to watch this trial as it takes place, because if they're ready to go to trial, that means they've probably done most of the discovery. That means that both sides have got all the information they need to either prosecute the case or defend the case. And I'll be very interested to see what kind of data they had gathered and what they had done with it. Because they're going to be able to say, well, look, we got this one person's vehicle 75 times. But when you put it on a map, we can show you like where they go every single day. Oh, and then they go over here, you know? I mean, if that's the kind of stuff they can show, I think it's going to freak a lot of people out. So we know that the government has cameras like this also. Uh, and I mentioned before, even in Michigan, there's some discussion about the police uh, placing these cameras at major intersections because they said, look, we just determined that of all the crimes that happen in this area, uh, like 35% of criminals go through this intersection either on their way to or from what they just did. And so we can often get very, very important information that way. And, uh, but that's just one intersection or, you know, a couple intersections. But the problem is that they're getting to the point now where they can gather more and more data. I remember in the old days, you guys remember this too probably. Remember Y2K when they're talking about how limited the memories were in the early computers to the point where they actually decided we need to shorten the year to two digits because four digits is too much storage space? <laughs> Never would have imagined we'd get to a point where somebody would track you through your phone every single place you went and record that data and store it someplace. Who's got that kind of storage data? Oh, it turns out a bunch of companies do. And so here we got somebody who's recording license plate data of up to 23 million people, many of whom had their data collected at least 15 times. And again, that's the license plate along with the location, time, and some other information. So uh, it's an interesting case. It's a class action lawsuit. We'll see what happens. Uh, the lawsuit seeks to have a company scanning and selling Californians' license plate data to pay up. The SF Gate published that. Mike sent it to me. Thanks a lot. And Stephen Council wrote it. 
questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Difficult and meaningful will always bring more satisfaction than easy and meaningless.